In this video, I'm going to show you how you can filter a collection in the front end based on a selection from the multi-select element. This video was inspired by a community question from David, who has a super base table with a list of categories that have an ID and a name, and another table with tools that has two foreign key uh, relations. So one with a primary tool category and then a secondary tool category. Then he has chosen a multi-select dropdown. Uh, so you can, the users can select the category of tools they want to see. And he wants to know what formula he needs to filter only those tools that have those selected IDs. So in WeWeb, I created two collections. I, um, I used the JavaScript data source plugin to then create two collections. I have a collection with a list of categories. So it's three objects. And here I have category one, category two, category three that have each have an ID. And then I have a list of tools. I have five tools and each have their own ID. One, two, three, four, five, and also two reference fields, a primary category and a secondary category, which are numbers that reference uh, the categories collection. So on my page, I have a container that has another container with three text elements. So I bound my collection tools here. I went and said, okay, I want you to list all my tools and then I bound to the information from my tools collection with the name, the primary category and the secondary category. Now I can add a multi-select element. I will add it here. And my options will be the categories, the data from the category. So these three objects. I can bind the label to the name of the category and the value will be the ID of the category. So let me name this element David so that it's easy to see, to find here in my variables. I can type in David and I see I have an array, my current selection and I've got nothing selected. That's why it's empty. But if I click on category one and three, the IDs of these two categories are added to the current selection. So now I want to only display the tools that have both these categories. So I can do this by going on my collection. Here I can add a filter saying where primary category is in my David variable. And is, we are using is in, which is a formula that allows you to look inside an array. So that's why we're using is in, because with the multi-select, the values are in an array. With the regular select, where you can only select an item, you would not have an array, so you would use a different formula. And secondary category is also in my David variable. So now if I go back to preview mode, uh, you see here that it worked. It filtered on tool three and five that have uh, category one and three. If I unselect category one, it doesn't have any results because uh, I used an and statement. I could, I could change that in, instead of an and, I could have an or statement. But I believe for David's use case, uh, I'm guessing he wants uh, an and statement. And here we have, oh, I chose the same one here, so category two. And now I could say category two and one. So you decide if you want an and statement or an or statement. It will, it will depend on your use case. You can play around uh, with this but you get the idea. This is a front-end filter, so the filtering is happening in uh, the user's browser. All the data is loaded from your back-end, and 
the data is then filtered in the front end, which is absolutely fine as long as you know you don't have if you don't have millions of items, uh, and the volume of data that you're downloading in your user's browser is not too voluminous, then filtering in the front end is absolutely fine, and it's usually uh, faster because you don't need to make an extra API call and wait for the back end to reply. For more on the topic, I recommend you watch our dedicated videos on backend filters. Now, maybe a couple of UX things we can improve is if I refresh the page here uh, by default, this will be empty. Uh, this is because on our filter, we have not ignored if empty. So because there are no values selected, so David doesn't have anything in here, uh, there are no icons viewed here. So on our filter, we might want to enable ignore if empty. That way, if the if the David variable is empty, the filters will not be taken into account. So this is good because by default, if you want to keep your multi-select uh, filter uh, empty when the user arrives on the page, you still want to display your data. Something else we could do to improve the UX is that one, when the user uh, selects one category, we could display a message. So first of all, in our placeholder, we could say uh, something like um, select two categories, just to prompt users to select two categories and not one. This is if we want our use case to be, um, it depends on our use case, but we could say that. And then for example, if, if there's only one category, uh, we could say here we could add uh, text that says, uh, please select a second category. And we would display this when the length of the variable was one. So here, if I didn't have any categories, I would, if my variable was empty, I would display the entire collection. When the user starts to select a category, I invite them to select a second one. And then when they select a second one, I display the filtered collection. 